Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you've tuned in. We are so excited over these lessons on Ephesians and Ephesians. And we are going to learn that we are truly a saint of God because this letter, when Paul wrote this letter, it is to the saints, to the saints, which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. That's all of us. And we saw the three things that happens to us in the Godhead. And that God chose us before the foundation of the world. And that Christ redeemed us by his blood. And the Holy Spirit sealed us until the day of redemption. And then today we're going to read from Romans chapter 8. This is important for us because no law can break that inheritance, not only because of sonship, but also by adoption. So first we'll read Romans 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You become a child of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, because in verse 9 of chapter 8. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of God, he is none of his. And then to get to this, another verse on this, which we could give you many, is Galatians chapter 3 verse 26 for ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ so y this is not only because of sonship but also by adoption for as many as are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons of God if you don't have the Spirit of God You'll never get to heaven because it's divine conception. And then, now this is Romans 8, back to Romans 8, verse 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage, again, to fear. Because see, you're in bondage. We'll find this out in Ephesians chapter 2. You are dead in trespasses and sins. You are dead in trespasses and sins. So you're not in bondage anymore after you become a child of God. You have freedom in Christ. You have liberty in him. You have victory in him. And he says, you're not in bondage, a spirit of bondage, because the fear, again to fear, comes from Satan. And then he says, but you have received the spirit of adoption. Ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby, we cry, Abba, Father. We can call God, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You must know these truths, and you must accept this gift today. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. We're going to meet him in the clouds exactly the way he went back to heaven. We're going to meet him there. For every true believer, we are going to meet him in the clouds. And this is what we're looking for. But then he says in verse 18 of chapter 8, now, I know every person that is listening is suffering 
because God says, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. He has never lost a battle, he's never been defeated. And if I'm in him, he says the battle is his. The battle is his. And we can trust him. Anyone that has created this wonderful creation that we can see, that he can do anything that this book says. And I don't doubt one word that he says. And he says in verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this world cannot be compared to the glory that he has prepared for us. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we come before thee today asking that each of us will put on the whole armor of God every day, that we will walk humbly with our Lord, that we will present our bodies a living sacrifice, that we will have a deep, deep conviction and godly repentance, renouncing every sin, that there will be no sin reigning in our bodies, that we will be holy as thou art holy. Holiness must be served in holiness. Righteousness must be served in righteousness. So we thank thee and praise thee today for our exalted position in thee as we have already just started in this wonderful book that thou hast given to us. Rebuke this enemy, the Lord rebuke this enemy today in each of our lives that every person may know that we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit and the Word of God that is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And the word is pure as silver, tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. And we thank thee and praise thee today for hearing and answering our prayers. And we pray that every person will be under the blood, that it is the blood that makes an atonement for our souls. And it is the blood that is the very life and power of the gospel. And we know these five powers will keep us from all satanic powers and the gates of hell shall not prevail against these truths. And we're rejoicing in thee today. Thank thee for opening up the windows of heaven and pouring out blessings we don't know how to receive. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So as we are studying about this wonderful gift of eternal life, forgiveness of sin, and inheritance, why are you working for things on this earth? Because God has so created us that things can never make us happy or give us joy. And peace is only in Christ. And joy is only. He's our joy. He's our peace. And he's our love. So we see that adoption cannot be broken. That's before the law. The sonship is established by the father. The law is established the sonship of adoption. The law established the sonship of adoption. So therefore by the father and by the law, we receive his inheritance, an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. We do not have to work for things on this earth to lay up treasures on this earth, but we must serve the Lord, willingly serve him. And <clears throat> if Christ is glorified, I shall be glorified. If Christ is alive, I too shall live. He's alive. He's the only God that is living. He's the only God that is, is eternal. He's the only God that had no beginning or no ending. He's the only way to get to heaven. There is no other way 
except through Jesus Christ. I've been adopted by the law, therefore it's legal. Therefore, it all belongs to me. Everything, Christ is going to receive this whole universe. He's going to be reigning as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and we're going to be reigning with Him. We're already rich in Christ. For every child that out there that's listening, you're wondering how you're going to make it in this world. You are already rich. Accept what you have as a gift from God, because every good and perfect gift comes from Him. Why, Jesus had no human father, but He had a legal father. The legal father gave Him rights and privileges under the law. And I say this with tears when I say it. All of you children out there, I would love to have a home where I could put all of you in to teach you the love of God and that you can have a heavenly Father that loves you with an everlasting love. And you earthly fathers, I pray that you'll wake up today before it's too late to do what you should do to show your children the divine love. Accept this gift today so you can have this divine love for your children. It's never too late, no matter how great a sin that you have been in, it's never too late. God still loves you. Accept Him today. All of you fathers out there, for these children, for your children, show them God's divine love. This is what the world needs today. Not things, but love. That's why love is the greatest thing in the world but it has to be God's divine love. So we see our Heavenly Father gave Christ the rights and privileges under His love. Under His love. What joy this is. So Ephesians 1, 4, according as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame. Holy means to be different. I cannot live like the world. I cannot act like the world. I cannot be like the world. There is no role model in this world. There's no such thing as self-esteem. We have one example, and that is Christ. There is not another person in the world that we are to be like. Read what He has done for you, and you will want to be like Him. God is holy means to be different. Jesus is holy because He is different from all other men. There is no other way to get to heaven except through Jesus Christ. The temple was holy. The Sabbath day was holy. The desire of every person that is a child of God, is to please God, is to fellowship. This is these two elements, basic elements, a desire to please, to serve, and to fellowship. Every one of us to have the very best in life is to walk as He walks, holy, without blame, no blemish in our life. This is the very best for every person that is listening. He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. In God's eyes, there is no past and no future. It's, he's ever present. He is. Everything is always in presence with Him because He is. We classify time as past, present and future. And as we reach the speed of light, 186,241 miles per second, you are leaving time completely. You are entering the door of eternity. This is what God has waiting for you. And if you go to hell, you condemn yourself. 
Now here today is a Bible verse that you must memorize. He that believeth. Now just think about this. On him, on Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath life. He that believeth not the Son of God hath not life, but the wrath of God abideth on you. The wrath of God. Accept this gift today, and you will live the abundant life. You will have victory, and you will never go to this awful place called hell, where it's the blackness of darkness forever, where you'll never see light, the worms crawling all over your body because the worms never die, and it's a hole that you are down in a hole forever and ever where there's no love, no peace, no joy, and pain forever and ever. And God did not make that for people. He made that for the devil and his angels. So we see in chapter one of Ephesians now, we're seeing this first prayer that we ha have here for us. Prayer for knowledge and power. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith, now listen at this, Paul says, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love unto all the saints. You see, this had to be followed up with the love lessons that we had because we're to love the Lord thy God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. So he says he heard how they had faith and they had love for all, all means all, we're to love all saints. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. And we are to pray for one another, night and day. We are to pray without ceasing. This doesn't mean that you get on your knees all the time and pray. But in our hearts, we are to be praying for every person. Our leaders, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Those that love the law, his word, those that love his law, nothing shall offend him, them. Those that love his word, Psalm 119, 165, verse 165. If we love his word, nothing will offend us. And to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. Psalm 122, verse 6. So here we we are to pray for one another. That's why I asked all of you that you will pray 1,000 people praying for our children out here. We could be restraining the evil forces that are after our children. This is the devil that we are talking about, this awful enemy. And this is how we're to put on the whole armor of God, that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Praying always. Praying always. And God's Word teaches us in Leviticus 26 that if five people will pray, he will chase 100 and they will fall by the sword. So I'm praying for thousands to pray every day for these children, our armed forces, and our leaders, and for the peace of Jerusalem, and for every person to be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto God. We can see this is the more powerful than any storm when we believe this and obey his word, but we have to live holy lives. That is a command. So we notice that their love and faith, this is what, they love Paul, they loved God's word. I want you to love this book and read it every day to give unto them the spirit of wisdom, everybody that's listening, and the revelation and the knowledge of him. Only the spirit of God could reveal the knowledge of God. You can never know this book until you are born again. 
So the greatest revelation that God has given to us is the revelation that we might know him. And the first prayer, of course, begins in verse 15. And these are, the prayer is addressed to God our Father, God our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. And we see this in these lessons. There are three petitions here that we are to pray for one another. That ye may know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints of God. The riches of the glory. We're going to find out about these riches. That we may know what is the riches of his glory of the inheritance of the saints. You see, this is the saints. So the riches into which the Father of glory has brought us through him who laid aside his glory and came to this earth to die instead of us. And then we're going to see the third petition in this is that we may know the exceeding greatness of his power, which is to usward who believe. It is the resurrection power, the power which raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And this is verse 19 and 20. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion at every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So what power is this? This is the power that raises up, up into heaven, that raised Jesus Christ up that we saw last week. The same power, you have to have the Spirit of God dwelling in you to have this power to be raised up into heaven to meet the Lord in the clouds. And this same power, this is in verse 22 and 23. You must understand this. This is, hath put all things under his feet. You see, he all the world belongs to him now. And gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Words like this makes us, feels, makes us feel like we want to worship him in spirit and in truth. So simple, but yet so profound. So simple, but so profound. And marvelous words, they tell out the blessed masterpiece of God. Christ is the head and we are the body. The church is chosen in him. Now this is the body of believers. There is no church that can get you to heaven. No church, no Baptist, no Methodist, no Catholic church can get you to heaven. He chose us in him. The head is in glory. The body has not yet been joined to that head. That's why we have to be raptured to be with him. So we're going to go through these. And if I don't get them all in this week, the riches that we inherit as a child of God. First, in Ephesians 1, 7, it is the rich epistle of our riches in Christ. The riches of his grace. Ephesians 1, 7. The riches of the glory of his inheritance. Ephesians 1, 18. We're rich in mercy. Ephesians 2, 4. But if there's sin in my life, if there's sin in my life, that mercy is taken away. The exceeding riches of his grace. Ephesians 2, 7. The unsearchable riches of Christ. I, I, the more I get in this book, the little I see that I know. The riches, the unsearchable riches of Christ. Ephesians 3.8. According to the riches of his glory. 
Ephesians 3.16. His riches toward us and our riches in him. The riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. We have an inheritance and he has us for his inheritance. We were created for his pleasure. If I grieve the heart of God, nothing hurts me worse. For someone that loves me the way he has loved me and died for me and still today praying night and day for me and preparing this beautiful mansions for me, every person in the world needs to know this. The glory of Christ's inheritance are the saints for whom he died to bring many sons into glory. Every person that's listening should tell someone this good news. You should give this out to your neighborhood. Every person needs Christ. And the church is the fullness of him who filleth all in all. These contain the most wonderful revelation of God that's in the Bible. What God has accomplished in his son to the praise of the glory of his grace. Psalm 19, 1, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. We lift up our eyes and behold the wonders of God's creation. How manifold are thy works and wisdom Thou hast created them all. The earth is full of his riches. He called into existence by his son and for him. Here in this epistle, another heaven is opened. And this is where Christ is seated today. Far above all power, all principalities. And we're all going to bow our knee, knee before him for the things done in our body, whether they be good or whether they be evil.